We have finally made it. After 10 weeks of trials and tribulations, heated rivalries, all out brawls in the Discord voice chats, cucumber wins, and chaotic races such as Atlanta, we have narrowed down to the 10 drivers who will be competing for the EPRS Championship for the next 7 races. Each of the 10 drivers will be seated based on playoff points earned throughout the regular season. The goal is simple, score the most points out to 6 races and be in the top 4 in points for a chance to claim the title in the season finale. These six races will be at Watkins Glen, Armory Digital, Indianapolis, Talladega, Chicagoland, and Kentucky, followed by the season finale at Michigan. Let's look how the 10 drivers will stack up for the EPRS Championship. <laughs> This has thus far been a quiet season for the number 20 Toyota, scoring his first top 5 of the season at the rough and tough Rockingham Speedway last week. He goes into the playoffs with a slight boost of momentum, although his road course performance could plague him early into the playoffs. As a result, Rodriguez would have to dig himself out of a hole throughout the remaining races if he is unable to stay up with the big boys. Either way, a significant jump in improvement must be made in order for Daniel to stay competitive. <laughs> Aside from being known as a short and fuel man of the series, Kian Abdarian has begun to make a name for himself in EPRS. After a rough start to the season, which included run-ins with frontrunners such as Hunter Rupp and Brandon German, he concluded the regular season by stringing together four straight top six finishes, and it looks like he could have won two of them had the fuel tank held up. Look for Kian to potentially pull an upset and spoil the party for the top drivers. <laughs> Another quietly mid to front running driver has been Nathan Inman. Most of his performances mid race tend to be in the mid pack, but can show some muscle in the closing stages of the race and pull a top 5 out of his ass. I think Inman needs to be able to show a little more speed throughout the entirety of the race. Scoring some stage points will put the 51 on the radar of potential bubble drivers. If he can put together performances like a Charlotte, then I believe Inman has a chance at the top 4. <laughs> To say Mr. Stottlemyre has an interesting personality would be an understatement. Known best for speaking in negative 32 decibels in the voice chats, Chris Stottlemyre's season has been rather lackluster to say the least. With an outstanding performance at Indy, with a runner-up to Tyler Mallon, we've yet to see Stottlemyre reclaim that magic. He's yet to score better than 5th since that 2nd place finish. He is however still young and has a lot of potential with his NR career. Let's hope he can repeat his NRCS glory at Talladega to help him in his championship chances. <laughs> Ah uh, yes, the Ryan Newman of EPRS. Known for his defensive driving style and team leading abilities, JLP takes the cake for Mr. Consistency of the regular season. Outside of his two DNFs, JLP has managed to score a top 10 in every race. But it's going to take a little more than consistency to win a championship in this league. Joseph needs to amp up his aggression just a tad in order to score those valuable stage points. Being top 10 is great, but top 5 is what will advance him to the championship for. <laughs> Now we start looking at the true heavy hitters for the championship. Connor Hudson started the first three races of the season by averaging 37 points. He looks to be a promising contender going to the championship, but he seems to be plagued by unlucky circumstances and tend to get caught up in other drivers' mess. Rockingham resulted in Connor voluntarily parking after triggering two wrecks in the opening stage of the race. He certainly has top five speed week after week, but he needs to learn to put a whole race together and take the late rate risk in order for him to capture a win. Playing conservative at this stage of the season will only result in him getting cowed up in mid-pack drama. <laughs> Mikel Giovannini, the legend himself. Having scored several top fives and leading the points at one point of the season, the Italian Stallion has exceeded expectations this season. The number 71 Dodge has been a front runner in every race he's competed in. He always seems to score those valuable stage points and finish in the top five when it matters most. He did have an altercation with Brandon German after turning him in the closing laps of Texas, which left a bad taste in Brandon's mouth. If Mikel can start leading laps and put himself in better positions to win, he should be a definite lock for the championship four. <laughs> the second foreign-born driver in this championship battle will be the league's best communist, Andres Molina. Although he appears to be one of the fastest drivers in the field week after week, early race DNFs and uncharacteristic mistakes seem to prevent him from staying consistently up front. After being 23rd in the points by the end of race 3, Andre struck together 3 straight top 5 finishes which catapulted him to 5th in the championship standings. Indianapolis resulted in a heartbreak after getting passed by Tyler Mallon for the win in the last lap, but this team certainly has so much potential with such a talented driver behind the wheel. Expect Andre to get a win or two credited to his name, or it will be bye bye Molina and his championship chances. <laughs> A pair of stage and race wins has seated the number 45 second in the playoff seating. 
Both times Brandon German has won a stage, he has gone on to win the race. I would say his aggression on the track needs to be toned down a little, but hey, you don't become a regular season champion by being a doormat either. Brandon's ability to capitalize on other drivers mistakes when it matters the most is the strongest characteristic. Keep a close eye on him during the mile and a half races, as they appear to be his strong suit. If his aggression is kept in check, he has a legitimate shot at not only the championship 4, but the EPRS title as well. <laughs> Last but certainly not least, seated number 1 with 10 playoff points is a number 08 Patronus Mercedes driver of Jerry Cook. With 3 wins coming into the playoffs, 2 of those with controversial finishes, Jerry Cook has shown why he deserves to run for a championship. His two missed starts for Charlotte and Sonoma almost played Jerry's chances at making it into the cutoff, but with perseverance and a little bit of luck, a championship is well within reach for Jerry Cook. Just remind him to show up at races and he will no doubt become a championship threat. And there you have it, the 10 drivers that will compete for the LA Productions Racing Series Championship. There is certainly a lot of talented drivers on this list, but after some thought, I'm going to have to predict that Jerry Cook, Andres Molina, Kian Omdarian, and Mikel Giovannini will become the championship four drivers. I think these drivers show week-to-week -week talent, and if they stay out of trouble, I see these four heading to Michigan with a chance at the title. But that's just my opinion. Let me know what you think in either the comments or the race predictions chat in the EPRS Discord. Tune into race one of the EPRS playoffs at Watkins Glen on 8pm Wednesday Night Live on NR Live.